All right. Welcome everyone to November 2021 Spiritual Question Answered with Cody Cat. Tonight's topic is crystal selection and matching. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Cat, K-A-T Cat. I'm the co-founder of Cody Cat. All right. So um, my wife is Cody, um, short for Cordelia. All right. So Cody and Cat together, we are known as Cody Cat. And we've been teaching and providing services related to subtle energies and spirituality since 2010. So crystals is just amongst the topics, all right? Just a brief um, run through of what we do. We also do energy readings, energy healings. We have our own energy healing modality called Infinity Healing. All right, the more normal stuff we do is like we teach Qigong. We have our very own Qigong called Unity Qigong. And um, we also teach meditation. We have our proprietary meditation called light meditation. Um, in addition to that, we also teach non-attachment meditation regularly on our free and donation basis uh, uh, monthly events, online events. All right. So I have been um, selling crystals since like um, 2009, 2010. In fact, that was how I started. All right. So um, before I go into this proper, let me share with you my story and you will um, get to learn right, how to do crystal selection and matching because basically it is uh, what I went through myself. So um, my beginnings was with crystals. So originally, okay, originally I am an engineer based, um, uh, I was helping, I was doing business, all right, I was doing business and um, my training and education is engineering all right so back in the old days right before 2009 i didn't quite believe in crystals having energies all right i have my sisters i see especially one of my sisters buy a lot of crystals and it's like you know um and i've been to crystal shops you know i'm just curious and they say like oh you know citrine yellow color yellow is like gold and if you buy it you know you it can help you increase your wealth and you have uh, pink stones like the, um, you know, pink stones like uh, rose quartz. Rose quartz is pink and it will help you find love because pink is the color of love, right? And I thought that didn't make sense. And people, I, I, I thought crystals were, you know, were overly priced, nice looking stones. I mean, uh, they are crystals. I understand what crystals are. They are crystalline in nature. That means they have... Um, um, they are, the way the molecules are arranged are in the form of crystal lattice. Not those of you who are into physics and chemistry, crystal lattice. So I understand crystals that way. But I didn't believe that, you know, there's a lot of mumbo jumbo and a lot of sales talk with the crystal shops. So basically what happened was uh, I had a, um, an inexplicable experience with, with crystals. All right. So, um, uh, what happened was I went to another city to visit uh, my then girlfriend, my then girlfriend, and um, you know, and also to visit a business client of mine. Now, a business client of mine, besides selling our products at the time, he um, they were also selling crystals, and so I went to their place, and they, you know, he introduced some crystals to me, and I was like, okay, you know, and uh, I wasn't quite sure. Then he proceeded to do a specific test on me. All right, it has to do with a balancing test. I, it's not easy for me to show you online, um, but he did a, a test to prove that the crystals have power. And I was totally flabbergasted. I was at a loss for words to explain what I experienced because there was nothing that I knew scientifically that could explain it. And my mind just went, you know, I was just totally shocked you know, from a scientific point of view because I'm a very scientific and logical person. And I immediately bought one of those crystals. All right, I bought one of those crystals. And although I didn't believe in crystals, uh, I'm, I'm one of those people who accumulate knowledge. I like to read a lot. So I kind of, I was having some kind of health problem. All right, I was having a personal health problem. And I kind of remember um, the chakra nearest to the area where my health problem is 
and I bought a crystal that had the color, all right, that had the color um, related to the chakra near where I was having my physical problems, right, my health problems. And I bought it, I wore it, and to my surprise, it helped with my physical problem. And so I got even more, you know, I had a real paradigm shift in my mind. That was in 2009, right? Somewhere in the middle of 2009. Uh, it just blew my mind and um, I was at a loss for words how to explain it. And that set me on the track to explore subtle energies starting with crystals. All right. So um, I sort of became crazy over crystals. I bought a lot, a lot of crystals. I tried to investigate how crystals work. How can they have the kind of effect on people? Um, because I experienced it myself and um, I bought a lot of books. I have lots of books in my bookshelf on crystals. You know, I spent tons of money on it. And um, I also looked into how to read auras because I believe that it has something to do with the aura. I saw some people uh, doing dowsing, um, L. Rod's dowsing, all right? And I thought that, uh, you know, I should get myself some dowsing rods. I got them and I played around with it and I discovered that I could read people's auras with the dowsing rods. So that was how I started, all right? With pretty much um, due to some inexplicable experience with crystals and from then on, Right, I explored deeper and deeper into um, crystals. And uh, for those of you who have heard my story, I eventually met Cordelia at the crystal warehouse. And uh, I start, you know, uh, we came together and eventually now, okay, we are partners and uh, life partners and also work partners. Right, so uh, I'm sure all of you, you know, you all will have some questions related to crystal selection and matching or some uh, questions about crystals in general. But um, what we are talking about tonight is specifically crystal selection and matching because throughout the years, right, especially during, uh, during the initial um, uh, the years, I focus mainly on how to find crystals, you know, that will work for my clients. I didn't want, I didn't want to be one of those crystal sellers whereby you know the client comes in and you try to sell them the most expensive thing right for to make the most money or the most pretty thing or just anything goes i wanted to like i you know i'm i'm really very i'm a systematic person i believe there has to be a system there has to be a way to identify which crystals are better for certain people right and um i don't know why i felt that way but because i you know i, I started to because I bought a lot of crystals and I visited crystal shops and people who have crystals and I make friends with people who seem to be able to communicate or who actually can communicate with crystals, you know, and I learned a lot there. Um, and one of the things I was really, um, I was really bent on was trying to find a system, a, a way, a systematic way of helping people by identifying the crystals that will work for them. And um, I managed to do it, right? So uh, I've had a lot of amazing results. So I can tell you uh, some amazing results. For example, um, uh, there was one lady I knew from my Qigong class. I knew a lady from Qigong class. And uh, so it was a Qigong meditation class and she couldn't meditate and everything. And um, she, uh, she was a mutual friend. I, I met two ladies actually, so she and her friend, and they had a group of people who were into crystals too, all right, and I was into crystals, so I joined them and they were like, wow, you know, um, they, they found out I've, I know about crystals and I've got all these crystals. So this lady who couldn't do meditation, she could meditation, she said she felt that she needed to get a crystal from me. And I was like, okay, you know, let's uh, go through my crystals and, you know, I will do it my way. So now. My way is this, I will check the person's energy, I will check the person's aura, and I will go through my crystals based on my knowledge, right? Um, after I check the person's aura, I will, have, I will have an idea what kind of crystals would be suitable for the person, and I will go through, you know, I'll shortlist some crystals. From those crystals, I will, I will 
shortlist even further based on energy, based on energy to find the one that will match the client the most. This is the way I do it. So I, I don't just do any how, you know, um, it's, it's not like any crystals will do because I found that by, um, through a systematic way, I am able to identify crystals that are energetically matching or compatible with the client. Um, I still remember that, um, so this lady was with a group of friends and they were kind of psychic and energy sensitive. Uh, so they consulted another, another person within the group who was also, who was also good at crystals. And, um, so basically, um, together he, you know, he helped narrow down the shortlist to two crystals, to two crystals. And I said from the two, no, actually there's only one crystal, which was very good for the lady. And I recommended it to her. And it was quite expensive at the time. Now, this was like 2009 or 20, 20, you know, 2009 and 2010. And at the time, I remember the crystal was something like um, almost a thousand ringgit, a thousand ringgit Malaysia. So that's like maybe uh, $250 uh, US dollars. So it was quite an expensive crystal. And the, the lady was like, okay, you know, she trusts me and she, she bought the crystal. And I never heard from her. I never heard from her for some time. When she surfaced after a few weeks, she came back with the most incredible story. She said she went back, she put on the crystal, right, to meditate. And to a surprise, for the very first time she could meditate and she went very, very, very deep into meditation. Very deep into meditation. And after a few, you know, after some time with the, with the crystal, she awakened her psychic abilities, her, her, her energy senses. She could suddenly hear crystals, hear spirits, see spirits, and all kinds of amazing things happen. And that was the reason why she disappeared for weeks. And I was like, you know, jaw drop. You know, all of us who knew her were like, you know, a few weeks before she was a normal person. Here she is, she bought a crystal, uh, you know, bought a crystal from me. And after that, she became a spiritually awakened person and could meditate and whatnot. So, wow, you know, um, that was one of my amazing experiences. Um, something more earthly, okay, another case. Um, so clients get, you know, they, they know about me, they recommend, and there was this particular um, client. So they came as a family, and they came as a family, um, husband, wife, and children. So they wanted to get crystals for everyone. And uh, what was interesting was the one for the father. All right, so for the, the father had some, uh, health problems and everything. And so I went through some crystals and I found a particular crystal and I told him, this is it. You need to have this. And they were like, okay, you know, you, you everyone recommends you for crystals. And he just took my word for it and he bought it. And I never hear from them for a while. And when they came back to me, it's like, oh, you know, they, they could feel that, you know, they could feel the energies of the crystals and everything. But the most amazing thing was the one that the husband bought, the man bought. So it turns out that, uh, you know, so normally what my, my advice for most of my clients is this, um, you know, you should wear your crystals during the day. And of course, when you sleep, usually if it's a pendant, you take it off. Otherwise, you know, you'd be all over you or you're sleeping. You might, <clears throat> you might crush it. I mean, you might sleep on top of it or you might um, bring the necklace or you might disturb your sleep because you have a necklace. And they came back to me and say, oh, no, 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 no. For my husband, the wife was telling me, for my husband, he must wear the crystal. He must wear the crystal while he sleeps. Because if he wears the crystals while he sleep, he doesn't snort. Doesn't snort. And I was like, wow, okay. Now I, 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 I can't say that, you know, I can't say that when I sell a person a crystal, I will know immediately what are the effects. Um, I can read based on the energy that the crystals will be very beneficial for the client. All right, will be very beneficial for the client. But sometimes the effects are hard to tell. And for this man, he stopped snoring after he wear the crystal. And basically, um, so for him is the crystal is for him to wear at night. Somehow the crystals will help him in some way and he will stop snoring. All right. So uh, these are just uh, two of the stories that I have. And I've got many because I've, uh, I've been selling crystals for a long time. But let me ask you, I bet uh, all of you who are attending tonight's session, um, you all would be interested in crystals. You probably have crystals. My question to you is, how 
do you select your crystals? How do you select your crystals? Um, are you one of the energy sensitives who can feel energies in the crystals? If you can feel energies in the crystals, do you gauge a crystal by the strength? How do you gauge it? Or do you buy it just because the, the seller told you it's good? Right? Maybe you're convinced by the sales talk? Or is it because of the beauty? Or price? Maybe because it's within your budget or because it's really expensive, so it must be good stuff and that's why you bought it. Right? How do you select a crystal? Now, let me share with you okay, how I select crystals. Let me see. So, so some of your response. Um, Evan is asking how to cleanse. Okay. Shik uh, Shiksha says, I, intu and I intuitively feel drawn to certain crystal. Okay. And Sharifa says, I choose according to intuition, what I feel attracted to. Kali says, because of beauty, I feel attracted to crystals. Abby says, is there a minimum weight of a crystal to be effective? Okay, there are some questions there. We will address them later. Uh, Kriti uh, um, says, I bought some crystal like citrine to help my career. Yes, that's what they say, you know, uh, citrine is good for, for wealth or for career, something like that. Okay, so um, some of you say by intuition, all right? Um, so intuition is very interesting. Uh, how do you know whether your intuition is correct? All right. So um, this was the kind of question that I had with me and how can we be systematic? So now, the first thing I learned about crystals is this. The first thing, okay? Let me share with you an analogy, okay? Uh, I've got many clients come to me and some clients come to me after they have gone to uh, another expert. It could be another expert, could be, in, could be an astrologer. Uh, could be someone who does numerology, you know, something like that. And whereby the astrologer or numerologist or uh, some, 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 some uh, expert in some field would tell them, oh, they need to get a certain crystal, you know, um, a certain type of crystal. Let's say you could say, oh, you need to get an opal, you need to get an amethyst, you know, um, usually they will be directed to the kind of crystals and they will come to me and say, Oh, I'm looking for this particular crystal, you know, and uh, do you have it? And they just want to select one. And for me, it's very simple. If you come to me with a request like that, I will identify, let's say you want an opal and I have opals. And of course there are different kinds of opals. I'll help you identify which of the opals are suitable for you. And then you choose, right? And whatever you choose from my shortlist will be suitable for you. Uh, I may have some which I would highly recommend because they are highly compatible, highly, uh, highly matched for you. So uh, my analogy is this. Now, selecting a crystal is kind of like selecting a life partner. All right. So some people will think that, oh, I, I'm looking for this type of crystal. I'm looking for an opal. I'm looking for a citrine or I'm looking for, for amethyst. It's kind of like, you know, by color or by type. It's it's a little bit analogous to saying like, oh, uh, I only want Caucasian men, white men, or Asian men, or Chinese men, or Indian men, right? Or, you know, or Indian ladies, Chinese ladies, whichever, which, whichever genre or race or type, because that's what you're selecting the crystals by. But think about it, right? Let's say you're looking for a Chinese man or Indian lady, whatever. Does it mean that all Chinese men are good for you? Does it mean if you're looking for Indian lady, does it mean all Indian ladies, any Indian lady will do? No, right? You have to find amongst all the Indian ladies and all the all Chinese men, whichever type, whichever type that you're looking for, you need to find the right one with the right fit for you, with the right temperament, with the right fit for you. And it's the same with crystals, right? It's the same with crystals. You may have identified a type of crystal, but the crystal may not match you. And we are trying to do this. Okay, this is what I try to do. I try to match the person with the crystal. All right, so how do we do that? And how can you guys do that? So I will be sharing with you all how. Um, let me see, some of you have some comments. J 
James say, the ones people give or trade me end up being compatible. The ones I bought were all incompatible. Ha <laughs> ha. Evan says, I seen a Kaki Lima, a pavement seller using, uh, um, using Ibu Batu, a mother stone, to let customers select their crystal gemstone. When the right crystal for the customer, it will keep turning rapidly. Any comment? Um, yes, yeah, so there are something like that, all right? So let me, first of all, address uh, some of your methods. Uh, Elena says she comes to find me. Yes, uh, Elena uh, used to come to me for, for crystal selection. Uh, Elena, uh, you know, Elena doesn't need to do so now. Elena is one of the Infinity students and she has uh, learned uh, uh, quite enough about crystals and now she's also um, selling crystals and helping people match crystals. So Elena don't need to do that. Now, okay, a lot of you mentioned intuition. Now, so um, those of you who know Cordelia and I who knows Cordicat, well, uh, part of the things that we do is uh, to teach people about intuition, psychic abilities, ESP. And when, we come, when it comes to intuition, we realize this, all right, we realize this. Um, intuition can come, all right, uh, intuition can come from different sources, okay? So intuition can come from different sources. And the sources, it can be yourself. That's one. All right, and yourself is kind of complicated. Yourself is um, using your mind, for example. It could be your heart, your emotions, all right, your emotions. It could be your chakras. It could be your soul. And uh, for those of you who are aware, you know, there's a higher soul and there's a lower soul, right? Which soul is it? Now this is just uh, for one, one source, self. From the self, which is giving you the answer? If it's your mind, is your mind reliable? Is your mind clear? Or is your mind, you know, filled with, oh, I just read a book saying how um, how powerful the Moldavite is. Uh, have you heard of the, the crystal called Moldavite? Right, if you read about Moldavite, it's like, wow, it's like a miracle uh, crystal or stone. Right? It's not that simple, okay? So, one of the sources is self. Now, the other kind of source of information is external and um, it could be spirits. And that's when it gets dangerous. So, spirits, you have, uh, if you can have good Good ones, or you can have good spirits, and you can have okay. Maybe I shouldn't write evil, bad spirits. <laughs> All right, and you can have bad spirits. How do you wish is which spirit is the one connecting to your intuition, telling you what to buy? And when you're buying crystal, there's another thing that's affecting you, okay? Um, I'm going through a normal source. The other thing is the crystal, right? Um, so those of you um, who are very sensitive to energies, you realize the crystal can kind of try to communicate with you. Part of your intuition, part of your senses, is coming from the crystal. The crystal is trying to reach out to you. It's like, buy me, buy me, take, a, take me away from this horrible shop. Don't leave me here. You know, I, you know, I, want, I don't want to be just displayed. I want to have a, you know, I want to have an owner, someone who will take care of me, take me with you, buy me, right? So it could be the crystal. But then, then again, um, again, it's not so simple. Now, um, the crystal, the crystal, is it a pure crystal? Does the crystal have some spirits inside that are that doesn't belong to the crystal? Again, are the spirits good or bad? It can happen, right? Um, the crystal can be good, can be bad. So 
Look, um, this is what I discovered on my journey, right? On my journey, it's like, I was like, wow, you know, when I try to read the crystals and find it, it's like, and when I understood intuition, it's not so clear cut. So is there like something more reliable, a more systematic way, right? So um, it's not to say intuition is not reliable. Intuition is reliable if you understand all this, right? It's, it's understand all this. And um, I had to come up with a something which is shorter, for example, something which is shorter and easier for my clients, right? Whereby they can feel it for themselves if they're sensitive enough or where I can teach um, I teach some basic crystal workshops, crystal selection workshops when they come to me, right? And uh, basically I'll be sharing some very basics with you also that you can get around to doing it. All right. So, um, the way I choose not by strength, not by beauty, not by price, not by sales talk. Now, how do I do it? Now, the first thing we have to understand is we go back to, um, this is something which I always talk about. Subtle energies in men, all right? Subtle energies in men. So those of you who have been attending my, my classes, especially on Unity Qigong, right? Unity Qigong class or something like meditation, I'll mention this. For humans, we have three types of subtle energies, three types. And there are these three. The first type is life force. So life force is the type of subtle energy which is in things that are alive. Hence, life force. And humans have a, the second energy is called Qi. All right, Qi is the energies which flow in meridians and also the Dan Tian. This was discovered by the Chinese. Right? Those of you who know acupuncture, right? Acupuncture it works, um, is totally on this concept, all right? Uh, this, on this system, understanding of this energy system. There's this Qi energy that flows in the meridians all over, over our body. If it is blocked, right, it can cause problems. And acupuncture is to unblock that, um, those blockages which may be in the meridians. And there's a third type of a subtle energy is called prana. So prana was discovered by the Indians. It refers to the subtle energies that runs in chakras, in chakras and the energy channels, it, in this system is called nadis. Okay, those of you who know yoga, you, you have encountered the term. So prana, chakras, and nadis, they are all synonymous. And that is the subtle energies flowing in chakras and nadis. It's called prana. So um, now no doubt, those of you who have heard these three terms, many of you, or I think most people would think that these three subtle energies are one and the same. I tell you, they are not. All right. They are all three of them subtle energies, but they have different frequencies and different properties. It's, it's, the, it's the same thing as electromagnetic radiation. Right. Let's talk about electromagnetic radiation. Visible light, light that we can see is a form of electromagnetic radiation. The Wi-Fi signal coming from the Wi-Fi is a form of electromagnetic radiation. So is Bluetooth. So is the microwaves in the microwave oven. So are X-rays from the X-ray machines. But they are, yes, they are all electromagnetic radiation, but they all have different properties. X-rays, you know, only visible light is visible to us, right? All the rest of the electromagnetic frequencies are not visible to us, right? Uh, X-ray is not visible. X-ray can penetrate physical objects, but the rest can't. So they have different properties, different frequencies, different wavelengths. So similarly, these three, these three types of subtle energies, yes, they are subtle energies, but they have different frequencies and different properties. Now, um, once we understand this, it's very simple. Um, if we want to get a crystal which matches us, the first thing is it has to benefit us. All right. So if you, if you want it to do the matches, I they say what we're looking for is benefit. 
The first thing is benefit what? Benefit what? So, benefit our subtle energies. All right? The crystals are capable of benefiting our subtle energies. All right, and this is what I look for. Now, um, those of you who are, um, I'll be conducting an infinity, um, infinity program, the first module, I think uh, next weekend. All right, um, those of you who are learning, you will learn the differences, the specific uh, properties of this and how to identify them. So you will learn more. Um, what I'm about to share with you all tonight is something more basic. I know. Those of you who attend our free or donation basis online sessions, you will be able to um, match the crystals yourself. Um, and if you're really interested in crystals, we also teach more about crystals in our Infinity Healing Program, but at the higher modules. All right. So we're looking for benefit. We're looking for benefit, and we're looking to for the crystal to help us to increase our life force, our chi, or our prana. So that is one thing. Okay. So you you want it to increase. E for energy. It has to increase our energy. Now, increase energy is not just the only thing. Alright, it's not just the only thing. Because, because I have discovered based on my experience, right, if we are totally looking for this increase in energy, and those of you who are energy sensitive, you would um, look for a crystal and you're looking for this, right, um, and what people end up looking for is, in terms of energy, is strength of energy. So um, there are people who are who develop sensitivity to crystals, especially if you love crystals. You've been with crystals a long time. You realize that. You know, you can actually sense the subtle energies in the crystals. So crystals kind of have their own subtle energy system, kind of like mankind. Um, we'll cover it in uh, higher levels. But um, for for the purpose of this um, this talk, we, we don't go into so technical details. All right. So um, basically, uh, in general, if you you like crystals, you've been playing with crystals, collect crystals, you realize that you can sense the strength of the energy of the crystals. And the tendency is to pick the strongest one. All right. Um, let me share with you all this. This is a mistake I made very early and I will share it with you all. <clears throat> um, those of you who are, if you're familiar with this symbol, this is an equal sign, cross, that means not equals. What I'm trying to say is, strong does not mean it's better. Or I would say, a stronger does not mean better. Alright? Stronger does not mean better. And the tendency is, you know, everyone is looking for benefits, looking for crystals to increase our energy. But there is this problem, stronger does not mean better. Now, um, why is that so? I've actually discovered that um, when people follow this or when I was following this, stronger is better, it caused problem because the, 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 the crystals can be so strong that initially for the short term it's good for you, but for long term it's not good for you. All right, how many of you buy crystals just to use short term? Mm -hmm. No one does that, right? Because usually crystals cost, um, you know, it, it can cost quite a lot. So uh, most people buy crystals thinking to use it long term, whether it's to wear or um, or to decorate the house or to to you know whether you know to look good or for the energy of the house. Stronger does not mean better, right? Um, stronger can cause. What what can happen is 
the strength of the crystal can be so strong that it overwhelms your energy. It overpowers your energy or it causes burden on your own energy system. So this is no good. So please bear in mind this. Stronger does not mean better. And please don't do this. All right? Don't. Don't select crystals based on strength. And uh, certainly, I do not select the crystal by size. Or price or you know uh, or beauty. So beauty is kind of linked to quality, right? Um, buying crystals can be like buying diamonds. The clearer it is, the more expensive, the more the higher quality it, it is supposed to be. Okay, so um, I'm not looking based on physical beauty or physical quality. Nothing physical, so it's um, cause physically the crystal cannot contribute to our physical self, right? What is helping us, benefiting us, is totally about subtle energies. And you're selecting based on subtle energies, you don't select by stronger equals better. So what do we select by? And how can we test it? So first thing is, um, I normally tell people this, most people have a form of psychic ability called clairsentience, ability to sense energy. Um, the only thing is this, the only thing is this, in today's modern world, everyone uses mobile phones. And our mobile phones has a lot of electromagnetic radiation and it kind of kills the sensitivity in our hands especially. It blocks the channels, it kills off energy sensitivity in our hands. Um, those of you who are into crystals, right? Many of you here tonight, observe this. If you really like crystals, you will notice that your sensitivity to your crystals will decrease after you use your mobile phone a lot, your smartphones. All right, if you use a lot of smartphones, you notice that you lose your sensitivity to your crystals. But if you play around with your crystals long enough, and then you kind of develop back your sensitivity because the crystals have subtle energies that help our subtle energies too. All right, so the first thing is, um, please, um, I would remind everyone, if you're really into crystals, please, your smartphones, don't use your smartphones too much. Or if you have to, please do like me. So what I do is this, um, so this is my smartphone. So I've got a, um, normally what I do is I buy the old version of Samsung Galaxy Note so I can use a stylus. So use a stylus. And if you see, this is my, my, my holder, my holder for my smartphone. So um, I purposely get a holder like this. Let me see whether can you can see. All right, so that my hands, my fingers do not touch my smartphone. I can hold it like this. But even here, my energy sensitivity, I can sense the electromagnetic radi radiation coming off my phone. So I, I try to avoid touching my, my mobile phone. It's definitely not with my fingers because I can feel the electromagnetic radiation, um, certain pain, and it will cause my energy sensitivity to lower down. So those of you, if you're interested in the crystal first thing, uh, use less of your smartphone, especially if you want to go out and buy a new crystal, right? You want some sensitivity. Now, the next thing is um, you will be sensing the crystal strength. All right, you'll be sensing the crystal's uh, energies. Now, the first thing to remember is it is not necessary the stronger, the better. All right, so no doubt you hold the crystal and you feel the strength or you, uh, if it's those big pieces, you, you know, you just put your hands near near a big crystal so those of you um, um you, you can see some big ones let me just show you all right so th uh, these are some big ones so if i uh, put my hands right you can just sense it you can sense the crystal caves you can sense the energy all right so yes so this um, those are some of the crystals i have for sale 
So um, you can sense whether by holding or just by um, the crystals have their own aura. So for example, the prana, prana gives us some aura. Right? Our human also have aura. The crystals also have aura. Now, what exactly are we looking for? So let me share with you another story, okay, on my journey with crystals. So um, I, I, I've not been going to crystal shops nowadays. Um, in, in those days, I, I, I was, um, I, I, I worked in Singapore for, I, I lived in Singapore for 16 years before coming back to Malaysia. All right. And um, in Singapore, uh, at the time, at the time, uh, I like to go to a particular crystal shop that had aura machines, right? Aura machines. So um, when I was into this crystals thing, right, when I first discovered crystals in 2009, I actually went, um, I didn't know so I was based in Ipoh. Ipoh is a small city in Malaysia back then, and there were no aura machines. But I remember Singapore, uh, the crystal shops where, where I had seen before, they had aura machines. So um, I, even though I came back to Malaysia, I went back to Singapore now and then because I, you know, I had more friends there. So I would go back, and every time I go back to Singapore, I would go to the crystal shop with aura machine. And uh, I did a lot. I did uh, testing with the aura machines. And... Uh, uh, to my surprise, aura machines work, and the colors of the chakras they correspond to my state. So some of the things that um they say about the chakras were correct about the chakra colors were correct. For example, um um just to give you an example, um I I went through a period whereby I was into network marketing. I was uh, I was trying to recover from my depression. I was trying to recover from my depression. So I joined network marketing. I went uh into the uh self-improvement course, morale boosting, uh, uh, self-improvement course, and uh, I was totally into it. And when I went to do the aura machine reading, the aura machine returned only one color, right? And it was red. So those of you who understand red of the chakra is the color of the root chakra. It's about, um, it's about our foundation, it's about our uh, uh, <clears throat> it's about grounding and also linked to money. So I was really very into that at the point in time. So it was all correct. My aura only had one color. It was strange. The the I remember the 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 the, the, the lady who was you know who was serving me she was surprised because most people's aura only you know have many colors, but my aura only returned red because I was totally into that. And uh, I came back to Malaysia. Uh, you know I. I stopped the network marketing thing and I went to my spiritual phase and I started meditating and reading about spirituality and all that. So, and after that, I made another trip back to Singapore. I went to Aura Machine and the color was uh, purple or violet. I think it looks better as violet. Only violet. Only violet. And it's true because I was going through my spiritual phase and because of this I understood that the chakras the color of the chakras meant something and they were important right and I did further experiments I um, so each time you use an aura machine you have to pay uh, in Singapore it was quite cheap back then it was quite cheap it was five five sing dollars for each um, aura photograph ticket just five sing dollars Right, so five sing dollars is quite cheap. Um, uh, those of you who are in Malaysia, right? If you don't know, I'm in Malaysia in um, in KL. I discovered that in KL they had some shops they were charging for it, right? Some cho shops they were charging on like thirty ringgit to fifty ringgit for one aura photograph. I don't know whether they still have it. I've not visited uh, many uh, crystal shops nowadays. Uh, some crystal shops they have that. So what I did is I tried with different crystals and the aura machines will show something. All right. So that's when I know crystals help our aura. And eventually I discovered that the aura that the machines were picking up were coming from the prana of 
our body. We are supposed to have prana, right? Because the prana makes up the chakras, the chakras have the colors, and the chakras will make up the aura. So um, most of the crystals, they have an effect on our prana and our chakras. This was a key point. Now, those of you who are into crystals, you will need to learn something about chakras, right? There are many things to, that you can do to, to test the state of your chakras. All right. So I discovered that it helps the aura and it can uh, directly affect the chakras. It can help boost the chakras even. So um, uh, we are going to do technical. What can a normal person do? What can a normal person do? So one more key concept I'm going to introduce to you all, right, is this. Now you can sense the strength and everything. Those of you who can sense crystals. So um, I shall assume you are very into crystals and you, you collect crystals and you play with them. You will develop sensitivity to crystals. Now you observe, right? What I'm going to ask you all to observe is this. Um, observe how the crystal energy inter um, how does it what happens when the crystal energy when you hold it or when you touch it what happens when both crystal energy and your energy come together observe the effects on your own energy okay so observe your own energy so i'm going to say this you need to observe own energy okay you're not to observe the crystal energy because a lot of people they focus on the strength of the crystal no okay you observe on your energy so it's your energy you're observing your energy which you add the crystal energy you observe this All right, now bear in mind, you observe your energy, which now you've added on with the crystal energy because you're touching the crystal. You're not going for strength. All right, so you're not going for strength. Let me remind you, you're not going for strength. What you should be going for is observe and you go for this. Can everyone read the word? Harmony. All right, I think the whole word, um, this is the only one that is green. All right, this is the most important word that you, you, you need to learn tonight. You are looking for harmony between the crystal energy and your energy. And if harmony is there, naturally, naturally, this will happen. If the harmony is not there, you can have strong energy, your energy will increase in the short term. Right, let's say um, I use black, black to dictate strength of energy. If you use based on strength, what you're going to have is your energy will go up for a while and then it will go down. All right. If you have something that's harmonious, it will help your energy to go up and stay up. That is the effect of finding a crystal that matches you. That matches you. All right? So that is how you select a crystal. Now, those of you who've been uh, with Codicat, you've been uh, attending our online sessions, you will have learned something. Okay, this is an advanced method. All right, an advanced method on top of this that you're looking for. Slightly more advanced for those of you who have been with us, you've been learning. If you're not learned, all you need to do is learn this one more thing. Light meditation. All right, so light meditation is a meditation which helps develop and increase your prana 
helps you heal your chakras, right? Heal your chakras, heal your prana, unblock your chakras, unblock your nadis. Really powerful and uh, light meditation, right? Which has all the benefits of other kinds of meditation, like clarity of mind, peace at heart, um, whatever other meditations has to offer, like mindfulness of breath, light meditation does it. But in addition, it does everything, right? To boost up your prana. So this light is actually the prana, right? Prana is a form of light. I would call it light meditation, easy for people to understand. Now, if you have learned light meditation and if you've been doing it for a while, you will have learned to sense your light or your prana, light and prana the same, or even sense your chakras or sense your aura, right? You will be able to sense your aura. Now, in addition to feeling for this harmony, right, what you can do is this. You take the crystal into your hand. Let's say this is your crystal. Um, okay, sorry. Without the crystal first, you can do, um, let's say you're at a crystal shop. You can do a, a short light meditation. Just shine light. Shine light, emanate light from your heart. Feel your light. Feel your light. So um, during the light meditation class, we teach you how to feel the light. Feel the light. You have a sense of your light. Next, you get a crystal. All right, so you've identified the crystal. You're trying to feel for harmony. You don't just want strength. For example, if you feel the crystal is very strong and you know the energies is um, it's like overpowering your energies, that's not what is good. You look for harmony. Harmony is kind of like this. The energy feels like this. All right, it goes into your energy. It fits very well as if you're wearing a glove. Right, it feels like that. Okay, so you you hold the crystal. The next thing is you do a light meditation, a short light meditation, just shine your light and look for the effects of your light. Does it boost up your light? Does your light increase? So if you have the harmony and you have the light increase, that is the crystal, right? That is a crystal that will be beneficial for you. All right. So these are the, um, this is something simple that anyone can learn. And if those of you who, who don't know light meditation, uh, have no worry, you can learn light meditation. In fact, tomorrow night we have a class on light meditation. All right, same time, um, tomorrow Sunday night, 9 p.m. Malaysia or, or China time, right? It's our class on light meditation. And you, you learn it and you practice it and you will become good at it and you'll be able to sense the light, right? And including that of the crystals. All right, so you don't have worry, and it is donation basis, right? It's free or donation basis, so you, you're not paying anything. This this talk is also free. You don't want to pay um, to donate any bit for it, and so is the light meditation class tomorrow. Okay, so um, it's something that everyone can do uh, without paying a single cent. All right. So uh, let me see what are the questions that you all have, and address it. So. All right, uh, I've been asked a question, how to cleanse the crystal. I think um, we'll cover that on another talk, all right? Again, I've been asked, is there a minimum weight of a crystal to be effective? No, there is no minimum weight. I still remember, um, uh, for example, I, there was a, um, a disciple of mine, you know, and she was looking for a crystal and um, in fact, I gave her a crystal because it was so small, it would literally cost nothing. But the crystal was so powerful, so powerful. It, it, was, it was just size, it was smaller than my, 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 smaller than the fingernail of my, uh, uh, of my pinky. Very small, it's just like a grain of, uh, it's like a grain of rice. Okay, like maybe the weight of two grain of rice or something like grain of rice, really small crystal. Right, it was tiny blue color crystal. I gave it to her and wow, it was so compatible for her and it was so powerful. Tiny little thing. Um, um, the only thing sad was she lost it because it was so tiny and then she dropped it somewhere and she can't find it. Right, But um, when she had it, it was very powerful and uh, I have many crystals and some of the crystals which are much bigger, much more powerful, um, couldn't compare with one tiny crystal. Right, it, and it wasn't like a diamond or anything, right? It's just a crystal. So it has nothing to do with size, 
all right? A lot of it has to do with the energy, the quality, and the match. Is it matching for you? Is it harmonious for you? Let's see other questions. Um, Jenny said, I have a few crystal bracelets bought from crystal shop. The matching of crystal based on Chinese birth date, is it okay? Um, no, it's not by Chinese birth date because you see, Chinese birth date will help you narrow down certain things. And um, normally the Chinese way is uh, by elements. And they say, let's say it's a fire element, they tell you to buy a citrine. So citrine is all the yellow color. It's kind of like saying, you know, again, back to the analogy, you know, it's like saying you need to marry a Chinese man. So any Chinese man can. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to find the crystal because even within the family of crystals, each individual, uh, each individual crystal has different energies, different temperament, uh, slightly different. All right, it, it can be similar, but still different. It's like not all Chinese men are the same. Not all Indian ladies are the same. Not all uh, white men, Caucasian men are the same. All right. So uh, everyone is asking if accidentally drop a crystal, can it be healed by placing it at or near a um, mother big crystal. Okay, all the stuff are uh, healing crystals, cleansing crystals, we will have another session on it. All right. Um, is gemstone far is gemstone power far more than crystal? Not necessarily. Okay, so talk about size, um, quality, not necessarily about beauty and quality. Okay, no. I didn't ask, will wearing a wrong incompatible crystal bring bad luck accident? Yes, it can happen. All right. So for example, if you're wearing an incompatible crystal, what's going to happen is your energy will drop. So when your energy levels drop, you know, is um, we say when your energy levels drop, your luck drops. All right. So you don't want to wear that kind of crystals. And um, um, uh, a good crystal seller who knows energy will be able to tell you whether the crystal have good energies or bad energies, good spirits or bad spirits. Right. So it's, it's, it's um, <clears throat> so this is the way I do. So um, and until now, if, if I really want to do to sell crystals, it's a very personalized service because there are not many people with my skills and I can't just hire someone to do to sell the crystal. So and I don't sell crystals much nowadays. My focus is more on uh, helping people. And uh, to be honest, to be honest, I don't sell much crystals anymore because I normally recommend my clients the best and most economic way uh, for enhancing their energies and usually usually it's either unity qigong or light meditation which they can learn free online so um so unless someone really loves crystals or they are really looking for crystals they come to me or they're looking for some rare crystals i've got a lot of rare crystals right then they come to me and i help them select otherwise if you're looking to benefit energies i would normally tell you um it's way better way way better way cheaper to just learn and practice unity chico and light meditation instead of relying on crystals also that's me all right <clears throat> so that's me i um i believe that i should be acting in the interest of the client i shouldn't be out there to try and <clears throat> you know try and earn money from a client I, I don't work that way all right so any crystal for protecting against evil spirits black magic <clears throat> etc. So yes, um, for those of you who, uh, this is a very simple question. In general, black color crystals are protecting. All right, black color crystals are protecting. So someone mentioned black obsidian. Um, someone mentioned tourmaline. All right, tourmaline is black tourmaline, right? Black tourmaline is good for protection. Um, and uh, I can share that with you all. Uh, again, again, um, you don't just say black crystals, black tourmaline and black obsidian because you're like saying i want an indian man or indian lady for a wife you still have to find the crystal which is in harmony with you for the best effect otherwise you can still end up with this your energy goes up for a while and then it goes down all right um Evan is asking is there a grouping in crystal like gemstone a c e are friends with crystal b d e f yes there are um there are groupings like that so there's a kind of um, system like that in general. Um, that one I will share for those people who are learning crystals under the Infinity program um, at the higher levels. 
What about buying crystals based on liking and looking at it? Sure, you can always buy crystals when you like and look at it. But if you're into crystals for energy, you're into crystals to benefit you, then um, you will find that it's not so simple, which is what I'm sharing with everyone. So you just buy on, based on liking, based on beauty, right? Um, and you wear it. Those of you who are sensitive, you'll find that if you wear some crystal which is incompatible, after a while you feel tired. You feel tired wearing it. It's a sign of your energy going down. So that's not good. That's not good, for example. You feel drained, for example, or you feel heavy, right? So um, uh, for me, for us, we are into all about energy, subtle energies, and we are really um, specialized in the subtle energies. So that's not our advice. Go for this energy harmony, all right? Evan is asking, is it bad to wear minor crack crystal? Um, it's fine for crystals to have cracks. A lot of crystals have natural cracks, all right, or natural inclusions. Those are perfectly natural. Uh, it could be during growth. Sometimes a little crack, um, let's say during, um, you know, a lot of crystals are being polished and there's an additional crack, then those are not so good. Then the crystals will be weakened. But even a weakened crystal is fine because a weakened crystal could be in harmony with you. You could have a very strong crystal, totally strong, but let's, uh, and it's not suitable for you, but maybe after it cracked, I'm not asking you to crack a crystal, okay? <laughs> if you find a crystal, please don't crack it. You know, um, let's say you accidentally, you have, a, you, know, you have a very strong crystal, after you crack, you know, you maybe you drop it or you chipped it, you know, you find that the, the energy goes down. And just because the energy goes down, it's more in harmony with you. It, it can happen that way. It can happen that way because the strength of the crystal has dropped. It's not all about strength. It's not about magnitude of energy. So don't be mistaken. And I, I'm telling you this because I notice a lot of people do that. Now, what is the other kind of thing that, that people like to do? Uh, people who are into crystals, um, okay, um, I, I mean no insult. I mean no insult, but there are a lot of people out there. What they do is they wear crystals all over. They, they, they wear you know, many bracelets. They have the crystal belt and they wear anklets and they wear pendants and wow, the whole body is the crystals. Having just learned what you learned, it will be very difficult for your body to achieve harmony. Very difficult because there's too many, you know, it's like you are trying to cook something and you're pouring all kinds of different sauces into the, 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 the soup or something and just end up funny it's not harmonious you know it's kind of like cooking cooking you want things to taste good right whatever sauces and whatever taste you add it must be harmonized right if you keep on adding everything it you can end up yucky right you can end up yucky and that's what uh, so um my advice to you is um you got to look for this and this harmony thing is, is tricky because if you have one crystal it can harmonize with you what happens if you get another crystal is uh both crystals in harmony with you so you got to check this and those who are into light meditation you practice light meditation you will be able to sense will it be able to increase your light steadily all right Kylie says, I have an Amazonite pendant. It's so miracle. Calm me, not rushing to make decision. I also have red phantom pendant. It helps me to clear my old belief that I'm putting on, which does not serve me for any purpose. Yes, crystals can have that kind of uh, effect. Crystal bracket, which hand to use, left or right? So uh, left or right, um, uh, we can go into that. Uh, it, it's not so, uh, it's quite technical actually, left or right. Okay, we have to cover that another time. Uh, Evan is saying, is the shape of crystal important for healing? Any shape will do. Um, now, um, just a quick one on this. Uh, in general, natural form is the best for crystals. That means they are not polished or anything. Uh, but humans, they believe that certain shapes are better and then they try to uh, you know, cut it into shape and it can help. But remember, every time you cut a natural crystal, you are decreasing its natural strength and it goes down. All right, it decreases natural strength and energy. So um, yeah, sometimes you don't want too strong, um, um, but the point is, you know, it's kind of like you are, you are taking away parts of the crystal and it hurts the crystal. So um, for me, I love crystals. I will never do that. 
Okay, so um, uh, yes, some shapes help, um, but the best shape is, is natural form. It's, it's raw form, all right? When it's not hurt, the energy is uh, the most, um, when it's energy is in the most complete state, in 100%, without it being cracked or damaged in any way, that is the best. All right, so um, if you come to my place, okay, I've got plenty of, uh, I've got plenty of uh, crystals that are raw, okay? I, 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 I collect and sell a lot of raw crystals. Uh, um, that's my preference. And if you're working with crystals or healing, it's, those are the kind that are best. Shisha says, I bought black tourmaline raw crystal from my home. My body home I dropped from my hand and broke. Does that supposed to mean anything? Um, no, right? If you drop it, it means you're callous or you sleep. And that's just it, right? It, it, it happens. So some people believe that, you know, uh, sometimes the crystal, uh, you drop it, it cracks, it, it protected you. No. Um, protection crystals, sometimes crystals will crack to protect you. Yes, it can happen. It can happen. Um, uh, for example, rose quartz will crack to heal your heart. Or rather, it's absorbing a lot of negative energies. If it absorbs a lot of negative energies from your heart and then it tries to give you positive energies and when it can't take it anymore it will crack that is rose quartz for you um, so the other types of crystals uh, that's what they do they absorb negative energies from you and once they cannot take it anymore they will crack some crystals will crack not all crystals all right so if your crystals crack it's because they have absorbed too much negative energies from you usually to help heal you or protect you okay um, what do you do with crystals when they're no longer compatible? Do you give it to someone or bury it somewhere into the earth? So you can give it to someone else. All right, you can give it to someone else. You can sell it. It's up to you. Um, if, it's, uh, if the crystal is damaged beyond repair and you can sense it, you can feel the energies are totally gone, you can return it to Mother Earth. So just bury it. Uh, what about salts? Can salt be considered a crystal? Yes, salts can be, you know, salts are crystalline, but they don't have um, energies the same way they do. For example, if you take uh, most salt crystals, I mean like your sodium chloride or salt, the salty salt, right? Uh, you can have a big chunk of it, you know, it doesn't boost your natural, your energies, your prana, that way it doesn't help with your light meditation, no, it won't, right? In general, most of those salts won't. Evan asked, can spirit reside in crystal? Yes, if a crystal's original, um, original energy, is um is weakened right external spirits or malevolent spirits or bad spirits can enter or make the crystal its home all right um cordelia is sharing okay those of you you might see it um tomorrow cordelia is conducting a sound and crystal workshop with elena between 4 30 p.m to 6 p.m malaysia time all right 4 30 to 6 p.m malaysia or china time so if you want to experience a crystal meditation as guided by Elena, you can join tomorrow. All right. So um, there's a form of a crystal meditation that we used to do. So uh, you know, if you ever come to my place, it's crystals everywhere. Um, in those days, pre-pandemic days, people come to my place for meditation and you can meditate together with the crystals and uh, the crystals will heal you. And it's an amazing experience. Um, but uh, now we can't do that, but Elena will be doing so you can do it with your crystals. Okay, and you all can do it online. So tomorrow 4.30 to 6 p.m. with Cordelia and Elena. Stanley says crystals mix in organite pyramid claims to heighten energy. Is that true? Um, when it comes to organite, you know, organite have a lot of stuff inside. Those of you who know what organite is. Um, the thing is organite's energy depends a lot on the maker's energy. Who made it and what does the maker use? So if the maker's energy is not so good, then the organite will have whatever energy the, the maker has. If the maker energy is not good, you have not good energy. If the maker's energy is good, then you have good energies. So it depends on the person. It doesn't depend so much on the material that is put inside. The crystals can have an effect, um, right? But the by far the single most important factor is the maker of the organite. Ricky is asking which hand good to wear bracelet. So you have a right hand, left hand, but it's not just right hand and left hand. All right, it's a bit technical. Um, I would need to have another session to go into that. Or those of you, uh, uh, anyone who's on Infinity program, you will learn everything. All right, you will learn um, exactly what is 
um, how to define those hands things. Jenny, can Crystal be worn while attending wake or hospital, visiting sick people? Some people say not ideal to do so. Yes, you can. So the idea of a crystal is to boost, right? To bring benefits to your energy for the long term. All right, for the long term, you only do it by harmony. So for example, you know, um, hospitals and funerary, funeral wakes, they may be spirits, bad spirits, negative energies there. So you will want to boost your energy to protect yourself so that you don't have negative energies stick on to you. So yes, by all means, please wear your crystals that are beneficial for you. All right, um, Ricky is asking, how about if the crystal broke, it still have energy or need to grave it? So it depends. Okay, again, you have to go and sense the energies of the crystal. So this takes time to develop. Either you, you've been using crystals a lot, or you learned light meditation and unity qigong, you unblock your energies and you're able to, you know, when you unblock your energies, you will be more sensitive to energies. And if you break the crystal, you, you will know how much of the crystal energy is left. Usually, even if a crystal is broken, some energy is left inside. So you don't have to throw it away. I, I Normally, I don't throw away, but uh, my heart will get broken. Um, but at my level now, I can heal the crystal. I can heal it back to normal. I can heal it back to normal um, in terms of energy, even though the physical form is broken. The energy can be healed. All right? Uh, yeah. How do we keep... John is asking, how do you keep our crystals when they are not in use? In a wooden box, plastic container, open space? Um, so um, the thing about crystals is um, you should try to keep them away from direct sunlight. That is the first thing. Because crystals normally grow in a, an environment with very little sunlight. And you need to know your crystals. So some crystals can take sunlight, some can't. All right. Um, now, you can put them in a cabinet or anything, any container, um, don't need to be all dark. Crystals, um, crystals are alive, okay, they are alive, they can communicate with each other. Crystals like to be placed together, alright, they like to be placed together, not necessarily touching each other, right? The same time they can touch each other, you can give a little bit of space, you can have a display cabinet, you know, you put them all together, that's fine, okay? And this is, can we say let make crystal only ornament but no power? For example, cubic zirconia. Um, you'll find that let make crystals don't have uh, very strong subtle energies or don't have subtle energies, right? It has, it still has its physical properties, right? But in terms of subtle energies, right, and benefit to humans in terms of energies, not much. You'll find that you find it that big. It does have some, but much less compared to natural ones. Kylie asks, is there any meaning when crystal pendant grow black dot? Um, so it depends what kind of crystal. For example, you can have crystals whereby, um, you know, they, they are meant to have things growing inside. Then it will grow naturally. So there are certain minerals that will grow inside. Um, so you can have uh, tourmalinated crystals. So some some quartz crystals, they can grow black tourmaline crystals or needles inside, for example. It's like black color needle. It starts from black dot. All right, so you could be having some of those. Okay. Wow, quite a number of questions. Do we need to take crystals off when dealing when with husband or wife? So, um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Now, so for some of you, um, you want to increase your energy during your your love making, all right? And some crystals can help with that. So it depends what kind of crystal you're, you're wearing and for what purpose. So if you're wearing a crystal for your, for your sex life, then you, go, you, know, you wear it for your, for your sex life, all right? Siksha is asking, what does it mean if elastic string or crystal break through the crystals doesn't break, right? My rose quartz crystal bracelet broke twice on different occasions, but that is with me, which is with me since four months now. Now, um, the, elastic, the elastic string of crystal bracelets break all the time, especially if your hands get wet and sweaty, they will break sooner or later. It just means that the material can't 
stand the test of time. So there are many different types of materials for your elastic string, um, but definitely they will break. It depends on how many uh, loops, how many loops in the bracelet. So uh, some shops, they just do, the worst is one loop. Um, uh, I recommend minimum two loops. Some shops will do up to four loops. It depends on how, you know, how um, the hole, the orifice on the crystal, how thick it is. So um, uh, don't be superstitious about it. All right, don't be superstitious about it. The time when a crystal really breaks protecting you is when it cracks by itself or it loses color. All right, usually it's, uh, this happens when it absorbs a lot of negative energies from you to protect you and sacrifice itself. All right. John is asking, are crystal grids effective and real? Yes, they are. All right, crystal grids are effective and real. Um, many people say they do crystal grids, but maybe they can, maybe they can't. Um, those of you who are interested, yes, you will learn about crystal grading um, also in the Infinity program at certain level. All right, um, there are many levels in the Infinity program. You, you know, you just can't teach. You know, you, you need to go through um, each level basics, and uh, as you build your knowledge, you will learn to do more and more. All right. Okay, looks like that is all the questions. Any more last minute questions before we call it a day or night? Anyone? So let me just round up. All right. Um, so for crystal selection, bear in mind what we're looking for is benefit to increase energy. Well, it can't help us physically. Uh, not, uh, it doesn't help us physically very much. It, some crystals do actually, but um, most crystals most crystals, they increase our energy, but we are not looking for strength, right? And when, so when the, the suggestion is to develop a sensitivity to subtle energies and you observe your energy when the crystal energy is added to you. You don't just observe the crystal energy. So a lot of people feel the crystal energy, they are feeling for the strength. No, they are feeling for the effect on your energy when the crystal is added to you and you look for harmony you look for harmony and the best way i can describe it is harmony feels like this like this it doesn't feel like this oh it doesn't feel like this no it feels like this all right it feels a very good fit okay and those of you who can do light meditation you will be able to if you can sense your light you will feel that your light will increase like that you know, and your energy is not supposed to go down you're not supposed to feel weaker over time or heavier or anything like that all right but if you provided you maintain your crystals well okay so this is a roundup and thank you for joining me so if you guys feel that you gain some value please feel free to make a donation and support our online programs so we can continue to do this every month all right you can't right is Okay, it's free for you all. And I hope to see you all again next month for spiritual questions answered. Otherwise, yeah, um, tomorrow, if you're interested, if you don't know light meditation, you would like to learn how to use light meditation for your crystals, the class is tomorrow, 9 p.m. Malaysian night, uh, Malaysian time, 9 p.m. at night, or China time. Thank you, and I hope to see you all again. Goodbye.